Hi and welcome back to the shop. It's been a while since I've checked the accuracy of the lathe, so we're going to have a look at that today. And um, I'm going to show you the way I do it. There's many different ways people do it, but um, this is my preferred method. So we'll bring you in and we'll have a look. So before we start, I just thought I'd go through a few things with the lathe. It's a Taiwanese lathe, it's a well-made um, lathe, it's heavy, you know, the bed is nice and heavy, uh, really strong, and it's sitting on a solid steel uh, tubular base. So I'm confident that the bed um, has got no twist in it. Um, that's, the bed has always been accurate. Uh, when I fixed the lathe down to the base, you know, it was all bolted down securely, and the bed has always remained true, you know, there's no twist in the bed. So if we do get any um, inconsistencies when we do our machinings on the test bar, we can actually change the whole headstock and we can move that around either that way or we can do up and down, you know, the, what they call the nod. So we've got some adjustment screws here and we've got more adjustment at the back. Um, so we can change all that. So I just thought I'd mention that before we start. So this is what we're going to be using, just a piece of uh, pretty stout steel, don't know what type it is. Um, I've used this before, probably about a year ago now, to do the same uh, job. So what we're going to do, we're going to machine at this point and we're going to machine out at the end here. Distance here is roughly around about 8 inches. And we're going to check the accuracy at this point and here. So what we'll do, we'll get this chucked up in the lathe, we'll face it off and then we'll proceed to do our cuts. Right, so we'll face this off first. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll make our cut here and we'll make it down closer to the chuck and we'll see what difference we've got between those two dimensions. Uh, we're, this is an old piece of steel, so uh, where I've chucked it up, it probably is running out quite a way here. So we'll just do a reasonable heavy cut on here with a um, insert tool. And to do our finish cut, we'll use a piece of high speed steel just to give us a nice finish. So we've machined all the way round and the cut has made a cut all the way round out here and back down here. So we'll, um, I think what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to take out this section here because um, we don't want no deflection as we are moving with the high speed steel tool. Um, I don't want to sort of mess this edge up so we'll cut this um, section here and we'll just remove that. We had quite a bit of chat through there, but I don't want to put a tail stock in because that's going to be our last operation. Because um, as well as making sure that the the um, the head, you know, like the head stock is level with the bed, uh, we want to test that the tail stock is level as well. Um, you know, because the tail stock could have drifted. Um, so we're going to have a look at that. So that's the reason for not putting the tail stock in. So obviously, hence the chatter. 
So that's cleaned the bar up. We've now got a rough cut at this end and a rough cut at this end. So what we'll do now is we'll change over to high speed steel um, to give us a finished cut. Uh, the inserts what I use aren't really ideal for leaving a sort of a decent finished cut. They're more for um, sort of heavier cuts. So we've got our tool here. So we'll get this set up and then we'll run a couple of light cuts across both ends of the bar. As you probably saw there, we took off a bit of material here, but we hardly touched it on this end. And that's because when we were using the carbide tipped tool and we were taking a reasonable cut, there would have been deflection in the bar pushing away from the cutter. So now that the pressure has been released, obviously this is now running um, more central and the tool, the high speed steel tool isn't putting much pressure on. So we had a bit of a heavier cut this end and what we did this end. So we'll carry on until we get a reasonable finish and uh, you know we aren't deflecting that at all. So that's both ends now done, so what we'll do, we'll now take a measure and we'll see what distance we've got over this 8-inch um, eight, eight um, span. So at the chuck end we've got 32... Uh, just over 29, so 32.29, and at the other end we've got 32 and just over 30. So 0.01 of a difference, which is less than half a thou over 8 inches. So real happy with that. So what we'll do now is we'll make sure that the tail stock is... Um, you know, running true to our center line. So we'll just clean the bed off.
make sure that there's no swarf what the tail stock's going to pick up on the way as we slide it through. So we'll take this nice and easy because we don't want that bar to start wallowing. So we'll now change over to our live centre. And we'll test whether we've got any deflection between the centre line here and obviously the centre line of what we've now um, machined. I'm fighting this. Oh, come on. Right, we want this square onto the lathe. It looks as though it's going to be ideal there. Yep. So we'll just bring this up to zero. We'll have zero in a easy to follow place. So I'll just bring you in and we'll watch this as we bring the center in and see whether we get any deflection by the center pushing onto what we've drilled. So we've got our dial set to zero, so we'll bring the tail stock in and tighten that up onto the bed. And then as we wind the tail stock in, if we see any deflection on the um, dial indicator, we'll know that the tail stock isn't running true to our centre line of the bed. So as we come in, you can see there that the needle is moving, I mean there's a very small amount. But what we can do then is just adjust we've got some adjustment on the tail stock to shift it you know um, either way uh, the the base here which goes onto the lathe bed is separate to the tail stock so and we've got a couple of adjusting allen head uh, screws so if we now tighten that back in and we'll just get that to move back to zero which is more or less there. So if we wind that tail stock out, wind it back in, we've gone the other way a bit. So we'll just tighten from the other side. A little bit more. So 
so now we've got very small amount so that's less oh that's just you know really minute um, amount of movement so i'm really happy with that so that's the bed all now trued up so we can carry on machining our next job so thanks for watching um i hope you've learned something um i mean like i said before there's various ways of you know doing this procedure um i'm only a home machinist so i don't need you know a spot on precision uh what we've got here is ideal for my setup and my usage so if you like the video please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching